morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Remote STEM Class. And Mr. Dowd here. Hope everyone's having a fantastic day. Happy Wednesday. It's hump day. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we just did Rocky Mountain National Park yesterday. Today, we're going to do Sequoia National Park. This one is going to be a short one. It is only six locations. So the first location is General Sherman. Measuring just shy of 275 feet tall, this landmark in Sequoia National Park is among the world's largest trees. Um, what was the name of the other tree? It was a wayside tree? Something like that? That was 300, so this one's not as big, but 275 feet tall is pretty big, especially for a tree. Next up, it is a museum. It is a giant forest museum. So a museum for the history of the ecology of the giant sequoia forest with exhibits of in, and intrepid, intrepidive trails. All right, so it's just another museum. You can learn more about the area, yada, 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 just like a visitor center. Next is the sequoia's version of the tree tunnel. It's National Park's tunnel log. It's a car tunnel carved out of a uh, trunk of a giant sequoia that fell on uh, over the road in 1937. So they have, there was a road and uh, this giant tree fell on it. Instead of cutting it up and moving it, they decided to hollow it out and make a little way you can drive through. It's very cool. Very, very cool. Next up, it's Morro Rock. So it's an isolated dome-shaped granite formation with a rock cutout stairway to the panoramic summit. Wow. Wowza. I would definitely want to visit that, especially the way there's that little um, staircase built in, which is really cool. Really, really cool. Next up, we have Crystal Cave. Uh, fortunately, the picture isn't showing up. I'm not sure why, but it's okay. Here is the inside of it. So it's tours of the remote natural formations that are offered from mid-May through November. So these are crystals in quotes, so just different minerals that have dripped, um, soaked through from the uh, rock above and dripped down forming these crystal crystals. And last on this short tour of the Sequoia National Park is the good old visitor center. The Lodgepole Visitor Center open seasonally. Blah, 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 blah. You guys don't care about the Visitor Center, so I'm not going to talk about it anymore. But anyways, I want to go visit Moro, Moro Rock because that is absolutely incredible. All right, guys. Have a great Wednesday. I'll see you guys on Thursday. Bye. All right, guys. Today we're going to make a vegetable soup. In here I put a little bit of oil and I put some carrots in and some onion. Salt and pepper. I'm going to add some Italian seasoning. And then a little bit of garlic. Okay. I'm also going to add three cups of water. and some tomato paste. Okay, so I'm gonna stir that up. Let that cook for a bit. Maybe five minutes or so. This is just some vegetable broth I'm putting in. Ah. And I'm gonna get another cup of water in a few minutes, put that in. So I wanna let this cook for about four to six minutes, maybe a little less. I'm gonna get a little bit more water. Okay, mix that 
that all up. that cook for a bit. You mainly want it to cook until the carrots are softened, which even in the water, they will soften. Okay, so. Ow, that's hot enough. No good. So after um, they soften, we'll add the couscous and we'll add uh, kale, which is like spinach. It's a superfood. go for a little bit and I will come back to add the couscous and all right so I'm now gonna put this uh, couscous in okay Whoop. and kale now what the kale is gonna do is it's gonna shrink down so it won't be sitting on the top like this. It's gonna shrink down and become part of the soup. Okay, I'm gonna stir it in. Now there's no meat in this soup, it's just vegetables. But I suppose you could add meat if you wanted to. All the vegetables. Oh, this looks good. So now this is going to cook for about 10 minutes. ready to serve. So the thing about soup is you can put a little cheese on it when it comes out. Like it, um, the Italian cheese. And you could even put more salt and pepper in it. The thing about soup sitting here is it's getting all the flavor. Like it's soaking up all the flavor. The, so the longer it sits and just is on a low heat, Tomorrow all the flavors will mix and it'll taste really good. So that's why you just let it sit for a bit. Maybe even though it says 10 to 15 minutes, you could let it sit on low for longer than that, like half an hour or so, as long as the flame is not really hot. So it's just on a really low flame. And then I'm just gonna cover it and it's good to go. For whenever you're ready. All right, see you guys. Welcome back to Language in Play. All right, you've been doing a fantastic job this week with your hero for a day characters. All right, we have our hero for a day character profile done. We have our background story done. So you've been really thinking in depth about these characters. All right, now it's time to come up with your character monologue. How did your character become a hero for a day? This is where you tell the story. All right, imagine you did something heroic and somebody asks you what you did. You have to tell that story, all right? A beginning, a middle, and an end. You need a little bit of background, right? What was happening that day? All right, so start from the beginning. The climax is going to be your heroic moment, all right? And then after the climax, how did you feel after you were known as a hero? Was it a... Good feeling? Or was it more of a burden? Right? Some people don't want to take credit for their heroic actions. Totally up to you how you want to see your character shine. All right? But what you're doing today is you're going to outline and start your monologue, and then tomorrow you're going to be finishing your monologue. All right? Can't wait to read your monologues, everybody. Good job.
Hi guys. So today we're going to be starting a project where the end result is going to be a painted river rock. So you guys are going to have to find yourself a nice smooth rock somewhere, maybe in your backyard somewhere or in the front yard, or if you're going to take a trip to the river or the beach, keep your eye out for a nice smooth rock. Okay. So this is going to be our canvas for the next project. So here is an image of a painted river rock. So we're going to be working on making an animal on our rock. So here is obviously a frog. Here's a whole bunch of different ones. Cats, rabbit, maybe a, a mouse or a rat. Ooh. So these are all painted directly onto some kind of a river rock or a beach rock. And here's some owls. panda bear and these are all painted on rocks a beautiful dog another dog rabbit frog fox so if you don't have a rock you can easily just follow along on a piece of paper and you can either make a painting or a drawing of an animal. But I'm going to be painting on to one of my rocks. So I also have some rocks that I made here. So here's one. This was my cat, Gypsy, that I had. And I painted it directly onto a rock. Here's another one of another cat that I have named Ralph. Again, I painted it directly onto a rock that I found at the river. Here's another one. No, I do not have a pet raccoon. I just painted a raccoon. So that is something that I enjoy painting. I love making different kinds of animals. I have a lot of cat ones right now. I have painted other animals on other rocks in the past. And here's another kitty of mine named Reesey. And I painted that directly onto a rock that I found at the river. Okay, so again, if you happen to be going on a trip soon to a beach or a river, keep your eye out for some nice smooth rocks. And they're really fun to paint. A lot of people paint rocks and leave them out somewhere for some other people to find. And that's kind of fun to do too. All right, guys. So next project is we're going to be painting river rocks. We're going to be making an animal. I will show you the steps that I take to make my animal painted rock. But right now, what I'd like you guys to do is think about what kind of an animal you would like to be drawing. You can make a little sketch on a piece of paper of an animal's face. It could be really any kind of animal that you think of. All right, guys, and also keep in mind you have a couple more days to find yourself a rock. And if you find a smaller rock, that's fine. You'll just have to paint a little smaller on your rock. But hopefully you'll be able to find something that's a decent size rock. Not too big, but something that fits pretty good right in your hand like that. And hopefully your rock is smooth. Again, if you can't find a rock, don't worry. You can just follow the steps that I'm going to do in the next lesson on a piece of paper. And you can use colored pencils, markers, or paint. If you have paint, I'm going to end up using some acrylic paints like this. So I have like a whole bunch of little bottles of paint that I'm going to be using in order to paint on my rock. All right, guys. So you can either just follow along and watch as I do it, or hopefully you'll be able to paint a rock along with me. All right, guys. We're going to have fun painting river rocks. Thanks for watching Enrichment TV, Gators. Remember, work hard, be nice, and we'll see you tomorrow.